Hello, I'm back at it again. Another day, another video, into the new year. Um. <laughs> so if you uh, watched my last video, you know I was working on a sketch for a new painting. Here we have the sketch. I think I am ready to get started because what else am I doing? I am on break and I don't have much else to do. You don't know this, but I lost a piece to my tripod, but I found it just in time for like me to make a new video, which I'm really happy about. That's totally irrelevant, but don't mind me. I don't know if this is a bad thing, but I don't usually have a plan for my videos before I start. I might need to change that up soon because I never know what kind of content I'm going to have, what the video is going to be called, unless I have like a specific thing that I want to talk about in the video. If you don't know what this is, this is a very dirty and disgusting palette scraper. I bought this I think in 2019 and I've been using the same one ever since. If I was a good artist, when I say good, I mean like a responsible artist. If I was a responsible artist, I would use it and then clean it when I'm done, but I don't. So now the paint has dried with the blade totally on it. I can't get the blade off unless I soak it in like some type of paint thinner for like ever. But who feels like doing that? Excuse me while I get this paint off of my palette that I left here for the last like week and a half. But the good thing about a palette scraper, it will get it off so well, especially if you have a glass palette. Best thing I've ever gotten. Getting a glass palette has been like the best decision for me. Don't be like me though. I paid like $25 for this glass palette. I talked about it on TikTok and then someone told me, don't put $25 into getting a palette. Like that's ridiculous. And I thought it was ridiculous. They told me, which I'm going to share this tip with you, go to Walmart and buy one of their picture frames. Boom, their picture frames like $12. You have a glass palette right there. Don't use the frame, just use the glass that came with it. Okay, now I gotta figure out how to discard of this. You're gonna have to dilute that color with turp so that you get a nice thin layer on your canvas. This is the one I use currently, Photoless Paint Thinner. It's really not turp, but it's paint thinner. It works. It works. That should be all you need. That's really all I have. <laughs> So if you don't really know what an underpainting's for or you're trying to figure out if you should do one or if you want to do one, I basically just do an underpainting just so that the white background won't be there. It won't be so distracting because when you're putting colors on a white background, I feel like it's really hard to like find the shadows and the highlights. It's not as easy. So having a color as the background just really makes it a lot easier. Think about it as like drawing with like pencil on a tone tan piece of paper. It's just a lot easier to see the highlights and see where they are. We got some of the underpainting done. You still have some more to do when it comes to like making the shadows clear and making, you can't see my friggin' face, making the highlights clear. It just helps you out towards the main process of the painting, which is obviously painting it. I need a new easel. And a few videos ago, I was talking about how my easel's broken. This whole thing, does not work the screw to adjust it came out i haven't been able to put it back because it just doesn't it, it's a whole technical thing back here the piece came with the screw in it so there's nothing much i can do you might be like kirsten why are you wiping down the underpinning that you just did why? Because I like to, for it to have a smooth surface. The underpainting had like a really drippy, kind of crazy looking surface, but like when you wipe it down with a like nice paper towel, the paint doesn't go anywhere. It just like kind of smooths it out. Okay, so like I said before, that first part is not the end. We still have to find the shadows and the highlights. That's why I'm going in with the same exact color that I did the underpainting in and finding where the, the shadows are, the creases in the pants, anywhere that like the darkest value is. It, it just helps me when I'm um, doing the final process of the painting, which is actually painting it. It helps me tremendously. So you want to make sure you do that in your underpainting as well. I also wanted to mention that this is also a good time to make any adjustments, tweak things, add things if you haven't already because the oil paint's not on there yet. So it's just like, it's really 
a great time to just change things up if you wanted to and that is kind of what I'm doing but not not much so I wanted to make something clear real quick in one of my last videos I talked about how I don't really like editing my paintings the better that they look I feel like the less editing I have to do I don't like to edit my paintings because I just want to show them how they really really are sometimes like a painting needs to be enhanced just like make sure it looks close enough to the original i don't do things like soften the image i like when you see the brush strokes and everything like that that's really what i meant i don't usually do too much editing i just make sure that the colors look vibrant it's cropped properly and the what is it called what is it called the perspective i guess is right because sometimes you take a picture and like the perspective is off so it looks like the proportions are wrong because it's tilted back too much i don't know so i'm using uh lightroom right now lightroom classic adobe i was playing with the features and i just wanted to make clear that i just edit you know what's necessary so let me just show you oh my gosh why is my game okay you see my painting here this is one of my favorite paintings on the camera it looks a little different when you edit the texture of the painting i'm going to zoom in so i can show you like you can see the brush brush strokes and everything and that's what i like i really like you to see that because that's what you see on the real painting but when you like edit the texture if you like turn it up you can really enhance the brush strokes but i don't really want to do that because that's not really true if you turn it down you can make it look like there are barely any brush strokes or it's like really smooth and i don't want that either because that kind of looks like not real i would hate to uh sell this painting from an image online and it not be true to like what it actually looks like so i try my best not to edit too much just editing what is necessary there is literally a piece of lint and i'm gonna edit that out because it's not really on there we're outside things are blowing around yeah that's basically all i really do okay so i'm getting started with my actual paint with my oil paint the heavy layer whatever not the underpainting and i'm starting with the darkest value first because that's what works for me it doesn't work for everybody but for me that works and i made this color and it looks like black but it's not okay it's not hear me out it is ultramarine blue and burnt umber if you're starting out with your darkest value do not use black use burnt umber and ultramarine blue because those colors make a really close value to black but it's not black black will mud out your painting it'll make it really dull if you start off with that color so do not do that Hi, okay, so I want to show you what I've done so far, but you know, you just saw me painting two seconds ago. It's been probably a day and a half and I am stalling when it comes to getting back to it because I don't know, we procrastinate. Fabric, we are starting to love painting it. I used to hate painting anything but the face of a portrait, but now I love painting fabric, especially baggy clothing. Like, I don't know what it is. I even like added a little indication for like, fabric under like she's sitting on fabric my sister painted and all over my painting she's young she's little so she didn't know but you gotta deal with it and keep moving uh hi okay i'm in my vehicle but that has nothing to do with what i'm about to say thank you for watching this video i really appreciate you watching this video all of my socials and my podcast are going to be linked down below in the description in my link tree all of my links are there such an easy thing whoever made that good job uh wow i'm weird i'm really awkward and weird i just came from the store after buying more cargo pants i'm obsessed with cargo pants right now i tried one pair they were black then i proceeded to go get a brown pair a cream pair uh gray pair which i'm wearing right now and now i have like an olive green pair i tend to lose self-control when i find something that i like retail therapy we love it anyway thanks for watching this video really appreciate you watching hello to my new subscribers that's it i'm done see you next time